welcome to Andover High School for CTN coverage of girls high school basketball. Tonight, the Huskies host the Coon Rapids Cardinals. CTN Sports pregame show is brought to you by Dave Peterson of Century 21 Christian Realty. Dave is another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN. Joe Young and Howie Shapiro on the sidelines for tonight's game. And Howie, uh, two teams right in the middle of the Northwest Suburban Conference pack and two teams who became instant rivals when Andover showed up on the scene just a couple of years ago. Well, and also two teams that are fighting for a spot in the conference. Andover 4-2, and two, Coon Rapids at 3-3. Three and three. Also, two teams that are very similar in style. Well, and for the Coon Rapids Cardinals coming in, they lost to Champlin Park at the end of last week, but that broke a four-game winning streak, five-game winning streak, and they and they felt really good about that, and they can't let that, that loss get to their head. Well, definitely not, and they knew they played the best team in the conference, and, and they lost by 20 points, and over earlier in the season lost to Champlin Park by 30 points. So it's going to be an interesting matchup between these two squads, a very similar style. Well, and a little bit different look in the starting five for the Coon Rapids Cardinals. Michelle Severson, the last time we saw them play, had a nice night off the bench, but now she's in the starting five. Well, she gets an opportunity. She's got a couple of games here to get in the starting five, averaging just a little under six points a game, and she was a spark plug off the bench in the games that we have done. And this is an opportunity in an all-junior lineup for Coon Rapids to see what they can do against Andover tonight. Well, Severson did not score in double digits the first nine games of the season, has scored in double digits it's three of the last four and she hopes that trend continues on the other side the Andover Huskies led by a five foot ten inch forward who seems to get the job done in just every category. Well, Russell say they're a very good ball player 13 a little over 13 points a game leads the team in blocks leads the team in rebounds and she is probably the most consistent player in this Andover squad we talked about similarities they're gonna have great guard play just like the Cardinals. Well, and, and the Andover Huskies, not an extremely large team either. So, as you mentioned, we'll see two teams that like to play on the perimeter, like to play, play fast transition-style basketball, and it should get to a, be a fun basketball game. Let's go to the homesbuiltofit.com. Keys to the game starting for the Coon Rapids Cardinals. Well, they have to recognize what defense the Huskies are in. They want to shoot the ball well. That's so important from the printer. Haven't shot well the last game also must move the ball inside. They want to use some of their ability inside and catch the Andover Huskies off guard a little bit. On the other side of the ball, head coach JT Taylor and the Huskies. They want to limit the Cardinals running game. They know they love to run. They defense must be in high gear for the Huskies. Also, they want to control the tempo. They want to take them, being the Cardinals, out of their transition game. Well, Coach JT Taylor, of course, a former Cardinal coach, so the bloodlines run deep here in this matchup between the Huskies and the Cardinals. We'll get into that more as we get into the game. The Cardinals and the Huskies tip off next on CTN. CTN Sports pregame show is brought to you by Dave Peterson of Century 21 Christian Realty. Dave is another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN. businesses say they're losing customers. We will likely see later hours would probably be early June. All right. Well, if you sent an email to CTN Studios or the city in the past month, it may not have been received. We'll be located at Riverview Park on the west side of Coon Rapids. can do it for us. Thank you very much for watching. We'll look for you back here again next time. order this game or any other CTN presentation as a keepsake video, call 763-767-6525 or log on to ctnstudios.com. Back at Andover High School, the Huskies and the Cardinals set to do some battle. The Huskies coming in on a hot streak, Howie. Yeah, they're winners of four in a row and, and 
pretty impressive wins at that, and they've uh, coming in here with an opportunity now to see if they can up their conference record to five and two, and that would be huge for them. And the Cardinals are standing in their way, want to make sure they try and up their conference record to four and three. Take a look at the starters for the Cardinals. Randy Hill, Chelsea Lyons, and Jasmine Townsend in the backcourt. Michelle Severson and Gigi Hudson up front. Katie Tyson, Sam Metcalf, and Kirsten Hankstler in the backcourt for Andover. Kirsten Hankstler and Dana Ewart down low. Chris Biggins, the fourth season as the head coach here at Coon Rapids. And, of course, there's J.T. Taylor, former coach at Coon Rapids, now in his fourth season here at Andover. Cardinals win the tip. Hudson getting up over Ewart. This is Hill up top, left side for Jasmine Townsend. Townsend looking baseline, now coming back out. Watched tightly by Tyson. Uh, we're we're going to see a very hotly defensive contested game here by both squads. Severson, a 12-foot jumper, won't go. The rebound controlled by Hankstler. Other end, a turnover to the Cardinals, and I didn't see it, Howie. Marking something down, but good it went defense. Off, it went off uh, Katie uh, Thyssen. I believe that's how, is that how you pronounce her name, Thyssen. I don't know. I asked you if it was Tyson earlier, and you I said think yes. it, I think it is, but I, I couldn't remember what we talked about. But anyway, nonetheless, it went off of her and giving the balls back, ball back to Coon Rapids. Well, the Huskies come right back with a steal at the other end, then a foul called against Randy Hill. When I had an opportunity to coach, talk with Coach Taylor, he told me, he said, probably will come down to this game of which guards for which team stay out of foul trouble. And there was the first foul on Randy Hill. Tyson eye on the left side, up top for Ewart. Right side for Medcalf. Sather. Down low, Ewart turns off the glass, won't go. Townsend can't control the rebound, ends up out of bounds. Now Jasmine had nice positioning underneath the basket that just couldn't control the rebound, giving Andover another opportunity to set up offensively. Three point by Tyson, won't go. Hudson the rebound. And we talked about Gigi Hudson too in our last uh, telecast. What, what a great. Uh, Opportunity for her in the starting lineup because she's so good defensively. Hill looking for room on the left side. We'll kick it back up top for Lions. Right side, Townsend. And back up top to Lions. Underneath, Townsend turns, shoots, scores. Uh, just and the Cardinals are on the board. Uh, a nice move by Jasmine Townsend underneath, just getting the quick turnaround and first two points of the ball game for either squad. Tyson, right corner for Hanksler working against Hudson. Will back out. This is Dena Ewart. Dina Ewart. Hanksler brings it back down. Tyson at the top of the key. Sather thought about this shot and then thought differently. Well, she had Townsend step right up in her face when she looked to take that shot. Metcalf will fire the long two, it won't go. Rebound by Ewart. Her follow won't go, gets it again. Third try won't go. Lions finally gets the rebound. At the other end, Townsend is fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot two. And the foul is going to go against Rochelle Sather. Now a nice job by Chelsea Lions to find Jasmine Townsend under, under the basket. We'll take another look at that. As, Nice pass, just couldn't get control of what she wanted to do, but nonetheless, got an opportunity from the line. Gets the roll on the first. Gets awful quiet in the gym when the opposing uh, shooter's at the line. And Townsend hits them both. She's got all four points in the ball game. And you, know, you can't have this matchup without mentioning the special connection that that young lady has to the coach on the other bench. 
Jasmine Townsend, the stepdaughter of Andover coach JT Taylor. And starting out with a hot hand tonight, Metcalf in the low post. Lost control, out of bounds, turnover to the Cardinals. A good, good defense again, both by Townsend and Hudson to get her to trap the ball and forcing that turnover. Lions will bring it across midcourt, driving, kicks it out to Severson. Fake the shot, steps in, takes the shot, won't go. Rebound by Ewart. Tyson will slow it down at the other end. Sather, a 15-footer, hard off the back iron. Hudson has the rebound. That time again, good positioning underneath by Gigi Hudson to get that board. That's what you want to do if you're a Coon Rapids uh, player, is limit opportunities for the Huskies. Severson trying to get it in on Townsend. They'll go back door. Hudson's little fadeaway won't go. Sather the rebound. Tyson on the run. Will stop up. The shot won't go. Ewart is fouled on the rebound. Attempt and will go to the line. I believe that was against Jasmine Townsend. That no, that's going to be on Hudson. Second foul against Cardinals. Dina Ewart already with four rebounds. Misses the first free throw. Landover still looking for their first point of this ball game. And there it is. Lions will bring it up court for the Cardinals. Metcalf waits for her at midcourt. Into the corner for Hudson. Low post, quick turning shot by Townsend won't go. The rebound by Sather. Huskies rush down floor. It's tipped out of bounds, and they will keep the ball. A nice, nice job by the Cardinals get a hand on that ball, preventing any quick fast break basket. Hanksler left side for Sather. Thought about the three, now working against Townsend. Kicks it back out, Medcalf. And the Huskies will reset the offense. Ewart in the corner. Kicks it back up for Hanksler. Sather in the post, back out, long jump shot is good for Kirsten Hanksler. Hanksler just, and Andover doing a good job of working the ball around the perimeter to find that open look, and that time Hanksler dropped it. Three straight points, and it's a one point ball game. Low post, Lions working inside, kicks it out to Severson, the jumper won't go. Hanksler gets the rebound on the run. And now Metcalf slowing things down. Sather from 15 feet rings out. Hanksler had the rebound but stepped out of bounds. And the Cardinals get possession. So far, a low scoring game here. We figured that that would be the case. Of course, the Cardinals come in here averaging 65 points a game, giving up 56 on defense, whereas Andover comes in uh, 54 points, a little over 54 points a game on offense, 51 on defense. Hudson turning jumper in the lane, won't go. Metcalf tracking down the rebound. Metcalf in some trouble. And used her arm, an offensive foul will give the ball to the Cardinals. Yeah, just, Good defense by Hudson. Oh, just great defense by Gigi Hudson. She just came in and pressured her, pressured her, not allowing her to do anything. And there you can see the carry. Townsend will inbound to Randy Hill, take it right back. Working against Tyson, looking for the baseline. Tried to get it across to Severson, tipped out by Metcalf. Cardinals keep it. Well, Coach, Coach Biggins talked about shooting percentage, and early on, Cardinals not hitting their shots. Yeah, they have that one point lead, but they've had some opportunities. Hudson goes right back to Townsend, gets the baseline jumper to fall, and she's got six. Now she's so good around the basket and using her athleticism to get open and get the opportunity. There's a double and dribble. Double dribble called another turnover to the Cardinals. 
And one thing I think interesting, early on they are guarding Townsend, the Cardinals' most prolific scorer with Katie Tyson, who is uh, gives up probably about four inches. But of course, Coach, Ta Coach Taylor knows how dangerous Townsend can be and must have excellent faith in her. Three-pointer at the top of the key for Tara Mortensen, fresh to the game. She comes in, spots up, and nails it. Well, Tara just doing a good job, and we, we saw her in a number of games just coming out and getting hot from the outside, and she just comes right off the bench, takes that first shot, and drains it. They'll find her on the baseline. This jumper is short. The rebound by Hanksler. Tyson on the left wing. Up top for Medcalf. Sather will put it back up top. Medcalf's, or Tyson's shot blocked by Hudson. Lions on the run and forces the foul on Hanksler. You can't say enough about the Cardinal defense. And again, Gigi Hudson stepping up and doing a, a nice play to cause that uh, that turnover. And defensive, uh, defensive on a team stat, just doing such a good job. There you're going to see lines. And then Townsend gets her hand, hand, uh, gets her hand on it. Yep. Huskies knocked it right back out of bounds. So the Cardinals keep it deep in the end over end. Looking inside to Hudson, finds a hole, but the shot won't go. Hanksler picks up the rebound. Well, Gigi made a nice move, a nice basketball move, but then had a, then forced her shot up and couldn't get the clean look. Hudson going to be called for her second foul early on the trip back down the floor. Now, one thing that uh, will tell the tale of this ball game, Joe, is is cer certainly personal fouls, but also turnovers. Neither team can afford either one. Hanksler, left side, three-pointer by Tyson, off the mark, rebound by Mortensen, great job tiptoeing the line. And she, get that, she got the ball back to Townsend. Long two for Lions is good. Coach, and the Huskies want to stop the bleeding. 13-3 now, the Cardinal lead. Now, and, and this is where consistency will come into play as the Cardinals early on, 10.07 remaining in this opening half with that 10 point lead. And I know Coach Taylor can't be pleased with where his squad is at this point. And a good time out for the Huskies as he talks about things, a little bit of more strategy as we watch that last shot by Chelsea Lyons just to stop, a pop, and a drop. Toes right on the line. And that puts uh, the cards up by 10. No, it puts the cards up by nine. Actually, it's, or eight. Eight. There's, they've fixed the clock here. Somebody got a little excited, made that a four point shot. Actually made it a five point shot, because they had him at 13. No, from nine to from 13. From nine to 13. Is four points. They took two of them away. That's at Minneapolis math, we talk <laughs> yeah. about that all the time. Either way, it's an eight point Cardinal lead. Biggest of the night at 11-3. And Sam Metcalf will carry across midcourt for the Huskies. Tyson, cross court, Mortensen almost got in there, but the pass just too high for Metcalf and another turnover by the Huskies early in this ball game. Well, that pass was too high for both players as it went over Metcalf and Mortensen. Now oh, there you saw, there you see, yeah, Metcalf did get a little bit of it. Townsend trying to look for Mortensen in the corner. Pass tip, but she recovered it. Hill up top now. Back to the left corner for, for Lyons. Going to the baseline. Ewart cut that off, but a nice shot getting out of there by Lyons. And, and good, yeah, good shot getting it back so they can start something again offensively. And Hill called for a travel before the pass. Kellis is going to come into the ball game now for Gigi Hudson. We'll see. We'll take a look at that. Official thought. Official thought she shuffled her feet a little bit. I, I personally didn't see it, but 
Tyson across to Ewart for Andover. Hanksler thought about the shot and took it down. Sather from 17, that won't go. Rebound tipped away and tracked down by Ewart. The Huskies got away with uh, no foul call on that. It looked like there was some contact made on that when Jasmine Townsend was trying to grab that board. Tyson watched by Lions. The Cardinals just sticking to him. They, no chance for Andover. Big block by Hill as Hanksler tried to go to the hole. Pass inside. Kellis kicks it back out. Three pointer for Lions. Won't go. Hill tried to get around the back, but she is going to be. No, oh, she just knocked it out of bounds. Or did she get the foul? She did get the foul. She did get the foul. Look, watch the block here by Randy Hill. Just a great defensive play again. Tips the ball over to Lions, and they try and start their offensive uh, drive. And there's the foul coming over the back is Randy Hill. Can't falter tenacity and oh, uh, They're hustle. aggressive. They're aggressive. There's no doubt about that. Medcalf, high post, trying to get it into Sather, does. Sather turns, shoots, partially blocked, and recovered by Severson. Townsend, right side. Low post for Severson. To shoot over Sather, it won't go, but got her own rebound. Townsend on the baseline, uses the glass, but can't get it, gets her own rebound. Puts it up again, and now Sather has it. And now a foul against the Huskies. Oh, I think Jasmine Townsend was hurt on that play. I think she got poked in the eye or poked in the, in the face of so. Let's, let's, take, let's take another look at that. I mean, just great work under there, but no whistle blown underneath, and there's an elbow right to the eye and that's uh, there you see there you see the elbow Jasmine looking over for the official for some sort of a call she'll have a seat on the bench oh another another shot to the eye the Metcalf apologizing to Lions there's another look at that Oh, that was, it was, it was kind of the, uh, uh, it was kind of a Three Stooges move. <laughs> Gigi Hudson coming back into the game for Jasmine Townsend after that uh, elbow to the cheek. Turnaround jumper by Hudson won't go. Sather controlled the rebound, or at least Got it to Andor. Oh, Joe, we're... Lions getting a hand in, getting the steal, and on the run, she'll get the bucket plus the foul. Oh, just an aggressive move by Chelsea Lions, and she is so quick. Got her hand in there, able to take it to the length of the floor, and the harm and the foul, and now 13. Now I was waiting for that 13 to three score. Jasmine Townsend coming back into the ball game. Randy Hill taking a seat on the bench. And Lyons sticks it. She's got five. What, look at what just a great aggressive move. And then she uses her speed to get to the basket. Gets it in her outside hand and the right hand takes it and uses the glass for the bucket and the foul. Cardinals on a 10-0 run. Since. The Huskies scored their only three points in the ball game. Ten minutes, three points. Eleven minutes. Say their head fake going baseline, got too far underneath, and it's rebounded by Kellis. Townsend stops and shoots. It pops right back out. Kellis almost had the rebound, but the Cardinals can't save it. We 
of substitution for the Huskies. Kenny Donovan coming. Kenny Donovan coming in for Dorman. Dorman. Jasmine Towns again, a hand in there, getting the steal. The Cardinals right back on offense. Towns in right corner. Hudson back up top for Lions, trying to thread a needle to the great save by Kellis. Three pointer by Mortensen. And a push underneath. It's going to go against the Cardinals. Now, we called on Gigi Hudson. I believe that is her second, Joe. Or maybe third. It is number three on Hudson. And we'll see. We'll see how quick. How about Coach like Biggins? Now? Like now, Michelle Severson coming back into the lineup for Hudson. And three personals for Gigi. Can't be happy with that. Heads to the bench. Three boards, one block. This is Dormanen, right side for Sather. Hanksler, 15 footer won't go. Kellis, the rebound. A nice position by Kellis underneath, get that board. Open look for Kellis for 15, and she knocks it down. Well, and she called for it too, and she was uh, quickly put that one in. 16 3 in favor of the Cardinals. 12-0 run for Coon Rapids. Handorf has it just ripped out of her hand by Mortensen. And that is three steals quickly for Coon Rapids. Helping continue this run. Severson left side, back up top for Mortensen. Townsend. High post. Severson will kick it back out. Three-pointer for Townsend is short. Hanksler chases down the rebound. Tyson trying to get it inside. Kellis getting a hand in there. Ties it up. Possession arrow favors the Huskies, so they'll keep it. Four forty-two remaining, 16 to three in favor of the Cardinals. Andover not able to do anything offensively up till now. Say they're inside, and what a block from behind. Well, I think Jasmine thought she was gonna get a foul called on her. The Cardinals back in control. Severson low post turns. Little fadeaway won't go. Kellis battles for the rebound, but steps out of bounds. Well, Cardinals getting some good looks underneath to it. And we talked about what they wanted to do is we're going to see the block here by Townsend. Wow. And they, they, they wanted to move the ball inside, and they have been doing that. They just haven't been able to get a lot of the inside shots to fall as many as they'd like, although they've got a 13-point lead. No complaints there. Medcalf looking for room in the lane, gets the foul on the way to the hole, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Alyssa Kellis picking up her first infraction. Good look at uh, Coach Taylor. Talking to... There's the move. Almost had the bucket. Metcalf able to hit the first. And Metcalf able to hit them both. Hinksler coming back into the ball game for the Huskies. A little bit of pressure from the Husky defense, Cardinals uh, easily get it over the line. Morrison almost lost it, working against Hanksler. And Hanksler now called for the foul. As That's going to be the seventh. Morrison was tripped up. That was number two on Hanksler. She came right back into the ballgame and quickly picked up a, an infraction. We'll take another look at that. We'll see if to trip over her 
tripped over. I think she I think she hit the foot of Hengsler. Hits the first, earns the second. What? Free throws, Joe, they're so important. Cardinals doing a good job from the line. Hanksler right side, watched by Kellis, almost peeled the ball off her hand, and then gets the block in the lane. Medcalf working baseline, knocked away by Kellis, but they say it's kicked, so it'll stay with the Huskies. Like I said, it went off the knee of Kellis. Again, look at the nice play underneath by Kellis. There's the block. They go up top to Metcalf. Metcalf, nice feet underneath. And another block, but make it three in a row for Alyssa Kellis. And then she's fouled, and she'll go to the line to shoot the one and one. And that's a, that's a frustration foul by Sather. Very happy. Wow. Happy Cardinal bench right now with 320 remaining, 18 to five. We'll take another look at that. She's trying to go just great defense again. There's a little dish off. From and behind on Dorman, and, and then Sather coming again, right back all down ball. the hole. And there's the foul, a little bit uh, grabbing on the arm, a little frustration. And she comes out of the game. Misses the front end of the one and one, and I think Townsend going to be called on coming in too aggressive. Oh, they're going to they're going to call it on Kellis. No, they did call it on Townsend. They called it on Townsend. And a one-on-one and one opportunity. And put yeah. at the line for a one-on-one. One-on-one. And Hanksler able to stick it. And earn the second. And she hits them both. Mortensen will carry it for Coon Rapids. Hanksler guarding from midcourt. Right side, Townsend kicking it out. Lions had to recover. Metcalf right in her face. Kellis. Back up top, Lions, Townsend for three. It's short, Metcalf has the rebound. Metcalf on the run, and will get the foul on Townsend. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Take another look at that. That's the second foul on Townsend. Not able to set up on defense. Giving opportunity for Lisa Tyson to hit. It's that cuts it to a 10 point. Kell is in to get that rebound. Already with five boards, three blocks. Running is Lions, the shot is short. Metcalf on the rebound. She'll run the other way. Take the running jumper. Dorman in the rebound, and she will be fouled. And go to the line to shoot two. Now they called that one on Severson. Be the first on Severson, it'll send Teddy Dorman into the line to shoot two. And she misses the first. Now again, we're seeing pressure defense by the Huskies, and I think Coach Biggins wants his his squad to, you know, to slow it down just a little bit and take some little better shots. Kellis, an open look from the baseline, won't go. Huskies able to get the rebound. Again, Ewart 
alone on the baseline at the other end. Her shot won't go. Kellis, the rebound. Well, the Cardinals fortunate there. That ball didn't go in. That was a nice look pass underneath. Couldn't get it to drop. Lions double teamed up near midcourt. Gets it to Kellis. Mortensen, right side, three-pointer, won't go. Rebound for Townsend and the putback. Oh, just a great play by Jasmine Townsend on the miss. She had position underneath on the offensive boards, used that quick up and in, 20 to nine in favor of the Cardinals. Dorman had thought about the shot, took it back down, gets it off the glass. Dorman with a nice move. And for the first time in quite some time, it's a under a 10 point lead. Morrison leads it. Severson baseline jumper won't go. Townsend comes in and collects the rebound. Kellis seemed to rush her shot just a little bit. Now they're gonna call another one on Townsend. That's three. And the uh, Huskies are slowly, Joe, climbing back into this ball game. If they can be consistent here from the line, have an opportunity with 1.05 remaining in the first half. Huskies now in the double bonus, so every trip, two shots. And Jasmine Townsend will go sit down with her three fouls. Two Cardinal starters with three fouls now on the bench. Cardinals with an eight-point lead. Tyson trying to cut it to seven. And she does. Ashley Johnson checking in for the first time tonight for the Huskies. Mortensen on the run. Lions down low, will slow it down, up top for Hill. Lions, for three, it's good. A oh, big shot by Chelsea Lions, gets that one to fall from outside, puts the lead back at 10, under a minute. Ewart, great pass from Dorman and underneath. Just Ewart a, will score. Just a nice look by Norman and to find Ewart, and she does a good job of getting Morrison rid of it. Morrison spotting for three at the other end. It won't go. Great rebound by Severson. She's fouled, and she'll go to the line. Oh. Call that on uh, Ewart, I believe. There's the three-pointer from Chelsea Lines, or the attempt. That was Mortensen actually with the three. Severson hitting the first. Momentary Just verifying the ball. Hey, hey. Okay. Players, one shot. Slight like correct. Correcting of, at the scoring table about who's foul that was. Severson hits them both, puts it back to 10 points. Johnson going to the baseline, blocked by Hill. And I, she's slow to get up, grabbing her hand in pain. That's her hand or she took one to the, to the uh, bread basket, I believe. There's another look at that as she drives the lane. Oh, it's Hill and Kellis. Give them each a block. One more time. I think she took one to the stomach. Tyson for three, it's good. That was a big three-point shot. Cuts it to a seven-point lead. Cardinals on the run. Mortensen from the corner won't go. Ewert tracks down the rebound, and that'll do it for the half, but a big three right before the buzzer for Andover. And it's a seven point Coon Rapids advantage as they go to the locker room.
most of us feel pretty safe when we're at work. But every year, highway and utility workers are injured or killed on the job. That's because drivers aren't careful and don't slow down when they approach work zones. Think about it. How would you like it if someone drove through your workplace at 65 miles an hour? Work zones. Pay attention or pay the price. This message brought to you by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. AIDS has killed more children worldwide than there are in all the grade schools in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Washington, Atlanta, and Miami combined. The time to do something is now. Welcome back to Andover High School. Just about ready to get the second half underway. The Cardinals out as far as 13 points in the top half, but the Huskies able to cut it to seven points before the break. It was all Cardinals early. And a big three-pointer by Tara Mortensen right after she got into the game for the first time. Alyssa Kellis came in with some big minutes off the bench, mostly on the defensive end. Three, four blocks for Kellis. And I think she played about seven minutes, had two of them right there. And over making that late charge to get in the game. There to look at the stats. Uh, both teams not shooting well from the outside. Six of 26 for the Cardinals. Three of 24 for Andover. There you see the uh, rebounds 22 to 18 in favor of the Huskies. And uh, we have an injured Andover Husky. Not sure who that is. Well, we had a block at the other end. Chelsea Lyons went to the lane. She was blocked by Dina Ewart. Medcalf and Tyson ran the floor. Tyson. Took it to the hole and was blocked by Randy Hill. It went out of bounds off of Tyson, so it is Cardinals ball. Oh, but she came down funny on that left ankle. Yeah, right. Yeah, she twisted that ankle, and that uh, that was that did not look good. And she is definitely in some pain. Beth Hanna-Michael. Here's a look at the team. Intending. Team leaders, Townsend with eight points, four board. Kellis uh, coming off the bench, 2.6 rebounds, four blocks. Dyson, four, and over six points. And Hanksler, four points and seven boards in that first half, Joe. You know, and you look at where the, where the score is now, 25-20 in favor of the Cardinals. This is a big half, obviously, for both teams. A big half for the Cardinals to be able to hold that lead. And uh, she's up, but she cannot put any weight on that ankle. And, that, and that's uh, a big that's unfortunate. Loss. Tyson hit the three-pointer right at the break at, with like 15 seconds left before the half that cut the lead to seven. Led the team with six points in the first half. And now in the first 30 seconds of the second half, is injured and heads for the locker room. Lions. Moving to the lane, the shot won't go. Hudson, the rebound, she is fouled, and she will go to the line. Well, you, you can see what uh, Andover did at the break, little adjustments, even pressuring the Cardinals a little bit more, not letting them get any breathing room out on the perimeter. That time, uh, Gigi Hudson doing a good job of trying to clean up the, the rebound, and she gets an opportunity from the line. Ewart picking up her second personal. First foul of the second half. Second one is short. Sather there for the rebound. Hanksler right side. Low post for Ewert working against Severson. No room. Kicks it back out to Metcalf. Michelle Severson doing a great job on the defensive end, limiting her any kind of an opportunity to get up and get a look at the basket. Hanksler 
Head fake, goes to the baseline. Partially blocked by Townsend. Got it back, Sather in open look, it won't go. A block by Severson as Ashley Johnson came down the lane. Townsend fighting her way in, but no call. Long two is good for Hengstler. Cuts the lead to four now, 26-22. That pass nearly tipped away, the Cardinals recover. Hill in the corner, takes it back up top. Townsend left side, three-pointer for Lions is good. A big three-pointer for Chelsea Lions, but you can see defensively every time a Cardinal player gets a ball, you see two defenders coming over and pressuring her. Hanksler head fake goes in. Lions tried to get there to tie her up, but she's going to be called for the foul, and Hanksler will go to the line and shoot two. It's going to be the first on Lions. First on the Cardinals here in the second half. Each team has a foul early on. Hanksler's first is short. And she hits the second one. Lyons slowly into the front court. Back up top for Hill. They get it to Townsend in the lane, turning and shooting, it won't go. Medcalf picks it up on the ground. And now a bad pass picked off by Hudson. They saw a score in over 38, Coon Rapids 32 boys basketball at the break. High scoring first half. Pass tipped away, tied up on the floor. Possession arrow favors the Huskies. Medcalf will carry it. Into the corner, Hengstler with time, takes the three, rattles out. Sather had it, knocked out of her hands, but the Huskies will keep it. The Cardinals in the 3-2 now, they, they need to make sure they mark a player. Hengstler was open, she had all the time she wanted for that three points. Quick inbound to Ewert and she scored. Four point lead now for Coon Rapids. Again, pressure defense by the Huskies. They back off. The closest that they have been since early in this ball game at four points. Shot won't go for Hudson, got her own rebound and the follow is good. Uh, great job by Gigi Hudson to follow her miss, getting her own board and putting it up and in, lead back to six now. Lions got there but kicks the ball and the Huskies retain position. Possession. Oh, that's too bad because Chelsea Lyons got right in the passing lane and she had that steal. Even if it didn't hit her foot, unfortunately it did go off the foot and that'll give the ball back to the Huskies. Johnson taking the three, it's good. Yeah, they gotta get a defender in the face of that shooter. That's a big three point play for Johnson. 31-28. Before Katie Tyson left the floor with the injured ankle, she is the only Husky player to take a three-pointer. Here's Hill looking for three, it won't go. Tracking down the rebound was Dorminen. But uh, since she has left, Hengstler has taken a three and now Johnson just sank the three-pointer. Makes it a three-point game. Nice movement, Sather on the baseline, great defense by Hudson. Rebound finally controlled by Severson. Good job. Lions will slow it down. I was gonna say, good job by Chelsea to slow it down. Hudson low post working on Sather. Good defense the other way and Sather gets the rebound off the Hudson miss. All that time Hudson just tried to force that ball up, did not have a good look at the basket. As you mentioned, good defense by Sather. Right in her face. 
And keeping her deep on that baseline where she couldn't get it back around the backboard. Hanksler on the left wing, down low in the corner for Sather. Hanksler for three, no good. Sather the rebound off the glass and in. A great follow by Sather. Now the lead is one for Coon Rapids. A block, Hudson gets it back and puts it in. J.J. Hudson in the right place at the right time. That ball came right back to her and she easily put that up and in. Working again in that left corner. Get it to Dorman and back out. Sather, a little fake, goes to the baseline. Shot goes in and out. Hudson has the rebound. Well, Hudson strong underneath and the one thing she has to do is make sure she stays out of foul trouble. She has three. She needs to limit her that, those opportunities here in the second half. Townsend. Oh no, that no, that, that was that was that was a All charge. But charge? What? I, <laughs> That's number four on Jasmine Townsend. I, I don't know. I'd like to see that one again because I don't think anybody's feet were set on on the defense. We'll take it one more time. Oh, that that's a horrible call. And it was right in front of the official. And she is getting an explanation from the official right now about she's smiling, yeah, but shaking I, her head, that wasn't but the, smiling. I don't think that was the official who made the call. Yeah, it was. I thought that the uh, the no, one down here. You're was. wrong. It's usual. They switch sides. It's crazy. Either way, it's a three-point lead for Coon Rapids. Their leading scorer now on the bench with four fouls. And a long two-pointer by Hanksler is no good. Johnson got the rebound. He got it back out to Metcalf. Now has it back in the corner. the right side, down low, back up top. Good movement by the Huskies and Patience, and now Hanksler on the baseline, the shot won't go. Rebound out of bounds to the Cardinals. Hanksler wanted the foul, won't get it. Uh, she, felt, uh, she felt there was a little too much contact underneath. Good job of uh, Anover trying to find an opening, but a better job by the Cardinal defense to not let them get that shot off. Mortensen kicks it back out to Severson. Working the perimeter to Mortensen underneath, back up top. Kellis will turn and shoot and score. Oh, just a nice move, Good again, good ball moving around the perimeter. And then Kellis underneath squaring up with the basket, 35-30 in favor of Coon Rapids. Three-pointer is good for Sam Metcalf. That was a big three-pointer for the, for the Huskies. Gets them within two. Teams playing so well on defense. Either team getting really good looks at the basket. This one tipped away, out of bounds. It will be Cardinal ball. I think that went out off of Kellis. But I think you might have an argument that she was uh, fouled from behind. Right, yep, absolutely. Get it right back to Hill. Pass doesn't connect. Metcalf on the steal, on the run, and scoring at the other end, and it is a tie ball game. Now Andover looked like in the beginning of this ball game was going to get blown out. Cardinals not able to do that, and Andover coming back after trailing by seven at the break now have tied it up, and uh, this home crowd real happy with the way the game is at this point, 9:45 remaining. Four. 
Oh, watch, watch the uh, turnover. There's the errant pass. And Metcalf with a nice behind the back dribble. She's gonna take it from one end of the court to the other. Gets good positioning, puts the basket up and in. That ties it up. If you want that to you want to pass. Look inside the huddle of Andover, JT Taylor. Definitely happy with uh, the way his team has turned that deficit now into a tie. Well, Howie going it down to the wire and highlights a plenty in this matchup. We'll have them all for you Monday night on Sports Night, live at 7.30. And of course, replayed throughout the week. The most complete coverage of Cardinal Athletics Online in the fastest half hour on cable television. Shot won't go for Severson. Sather got there for the rebound. And Severson called for the foul. That will be the third team foul on the Cardinals. Just one so far for Andover here in the second half. And Joe, I would think the momentum uh, has changed. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Meeting the Cardinals 17-7 right now to force the tie. Shot on the baseline won't go, but Metcalf there for the rebound. Can't get it back to Dorman. A nice steal by Hill, but Kellis in trouble. The ball finally tied up. The Cardinals will retain possession. And Coach Chris Biggins calling for the foul, but won't get it. Again, there's a lot of, of action underneath the basket on both ends of the court. As you mentioned, Coach Biggins wants the infraction. Officials won't give it to him. Lions on the run for Kellis on the baseline. Her shot is short, battling for her own rebound, but it's Metcalf that comes away with it. And then a steal for the Cardinals. Kellis, a 15-foot jumper, it's good. It's Cardinals back in the lead. Metcalf, near side for Hengstler. Ewert underneath, Sather, nice little move, and she'll score. Oh, just a great move by Sather. Faked her out, went to the other side of the basket, got the easy two. And the game even at 37. Hill, driving baseline, trying to get it through to Kellis, and does. Up top, Mortensen, an open look for three. It's hard off the back iron. Hengstler tracks down the rebound. Lions kicked that one, but breaks up the fast break. There we see, look at the uh, foul situation. Four on Townsend, three on Hudson, two on Hill, and only two each for Sather, Metcalf, and Hanksler. And we talked about foul situation in this game. One of the keys that which team stays out of foul trouble has the better opportunity to win. And, Johnson cross court three pointer for Hanksler is short. See, uh, Hill the rebound. Severson working against Sather, now looking for help. Gets it out to Lyons in the corner, back up top. Hanksler had a hand in there, but Severson able to recover. Cross court, Lyons will take the three. It won't go. Hill got the rebound and is fouled underneath. Oh, what hustle by Randy Hill underneath. Didn't have any kind of a look at the basket, but the Husky player got a piece of her and she has an opportunity now to go to the line. And there's the long miss by Chelsea Lyons. Watch Randy Hill come into your picture. She gets an opportunity and there's the push from behind. And that'll be the third on Dina Ewert. Put Hill at the line for the first time tonight. Free throws for the Cardinals. And that one will get Coon Rapids back in the lead. Mm -hmm. 
Andover has battled back to tie it twice. Second one is off the back iron. Sathern able to gather in the rebound, her 10th of the ball game. Johnson back up top, Metcalf, Hanksler on the left side. High post, Ewert back out, Sather looking baseline, brings it back down. Cross court miscommunication, Johnson can't get to the pass, and it's a turnover to the Cardinals. And this is a not a time for the Huskies to have their turnover problems as they did in the first half. Well, no, no doubt about that, and the Cardinals holding a slim one-point lead. Hill will take the three, it's short. Foul underneath, Kells had the rebound, but pushed Ewert to get it. Well, you talk about uh, one turnover, and this time a foul, but giving the ball back into the hands of the Huskies. Under seven minutes remaining. Dina Ewert in the corner, back up top for Sam Metcalf. They work it to the right side. Sather in the corner. High post, Ewert. Goes to the baseline, gets the foul on Hudson. And will go to the line to shoot two. That'll be number four on Gigi Hudson. Uh, Hudson and Townsend now both with four fouls for the Cardinals. And those are players that, uh, that certainly can't afford that. And you see uh, Townsend's been on the bench for quite a while here when she picked up her fourth. Ewert. Off the mark, but can tie it again. And she does. And the Huskies will pressure yet again. Hill, long pass, Mortensen to Kellis left side, back up to Lyons. She'll take the three, off the glass and in. That time, right off the square. And that'll make it a three-point Cardinal lead. Sather working inside. She'll get the foul. She'll get to the line to shoot two. Call that on Randy Hill, I believe. Yes, they will. That'll be number three on Hill. Now with 6.13 left in this ball game, and the Cardinals up by three. We're going to see how this foul situation is going to affect them. Townsend with four, Hudson with four. As we see that uh, little scoop and the infraction, and now Hill with three. Sather hits the first. Second one is off the mark. Kellis had it, batted away by Hanksler out of bounds. And the Cardinals will keep it. That's is gonna back off that pressure a little bit now. A two point lead, just over six minutes to play. Lions, watched by Metcalf, looking for room in the lane. Hill for three, it's short, Kellis. Has the rebound tied up by Hanksler, and that will give the Huskies possession. Great defensive play by Kirsten Hanksler. Now she's able to tie up Kellis and give her team the ball back, trailing by two, 549 remaining. These are big trips down for both teams. Johnson going to the baseline, blocked by Hudson, and then the ball tied up. And it'll be Cardinal ball on the possession arrow. A trip down for the Cardinals. The Huskies tie it up. Now another trip down for Coon Rapids, or for Andover, and the Cardinals tie it up. Hill to Lions for three. It's good. Big three-point shot for Chelsea Lions. And then a big steal for Tara Mortensen on the base, or on the Left sideline, Hill in the lane will be fouled and go to the line. Well, uh, and Morgan just tiptoeing, almost putting her foot on the line, but doing a great job of keeping it in bounds, setting something up. And now we're going to take a look first at uh, Chelsea Lyons from outside with the three. She drains it. 
now another opportunity for to extend this lead for Coon Rapids. She does. Leads at six, may trying to make it seven. She hits them both. Chelsea Lyons has scored eight straight for Coon Rapids and put it back to a seven point lead. Jumper for Eward is good in the lane. A nice, a nice move by Eward as she's able to quickly square up, turn and fire. Gets the bucket. Eward almost had the steal, but ends up out of bounds. Cardinal ball. Inbounded to Hudson. She'll leave it for Mortensen. They get it back to her. Ebert almost had the steal again, but ends up out of bounds to the Cardinals once more. But Dina Ebert getting in on those passes to Hudson. Cardinals keep trying to get it down to her. Lyons is fouled by Metcalf and will head right back to the line. Oh, That'll be number four on Sam Metcalf. Chelsea just being aggressive, getting a, a one small look at the basket. She's gonna take the shot and she does it. We're gonna see Jasmine Townsend at the next opportunity come back into the ball game with her four fouls. And they certainly can use her offensive output. Ball over okay, please, we have two shots coming up. Nice job. Lions hits again, back to a six point Cardinal lead. Second one off the back iron, Ashley Johnson tracks down the rebound. Sather across mid court will slow it up. Oh, Hudson has to be careful, looking to make that Metcalf steal. Metcalf into the lane, high jumper won't go. Hudson had it, Ewert took it away, left-handed hook shot is good for Dina Ewert. Well, that's too bad because Hudson had that rebound, but Ewert doing a good job of taking it away and then using the left hand for the bucket. Pass deflected by Ewert again. Track back down by Hill. Backdoor pass to Townsend. She'll go to the line. Hengstler picking up her third. Jasmine with an opportunity. Cards up by four. See if she can swing it back to six. First one off the right side of the rim. She's had some time on the bench. First opportunity here coming back after sitting for a while. Well, she scored the first six points of the game for Coon Rapids. Has only scored two points since. Mostly because of that foul trouble. She does hit the second, put it back to a five point lead. Ashley Johnson on the left side for Andover now. Cross court, Hanksler for three. It's good. Again, they have to get a defender in her face. Hanksler left all alone, and she drains the three and cuts the lead to two. JT Taylor taking a timeout. At this point, 3.54 remaining. Again, let's watch it again. Hanks are all alone, defender not there. Of course, Townsend has to be concerned about picking up her fifth foul, but she drained it. A little later this week, get our chance to see the swimming and diving team for Coon Rapids taking on the Anoka Tornadoes at Fred Moore Middle School that will debut here tonight or midnight on Thursday night. A yeah, good opportunity for everybody to see the swimming and diving team and what they're all about. Get an opportunity to get some face time. Coach Biggins, some last-minute instructions 
to his squad. Well, a little 5-2 run put together by the Andover Huskies. There you see Katie Tyson with the ice on her ankle on the bench. Watching her team, it was cut the lead to two. Been a couple three ties in the second half. Well, miscommunication and a turnover by the Cardinals. The Huskies will have a chance to tie it on their next possession. All right, time Jasmine uh, Thompson thought Randy Hill was going to go one way, but she did go the other. This one goes off the hands of Eward. She's able to save it, though. A great save by Eward, and she had the easy bucket underneath, too. Eward now about 16 feet out. The pass blocked by Hudson, but Eward got it back. Metcalf, a jumper, is short. Hudson, the rebound. Now Hudson's certainly been dominant on the boards tonight for the Cardinals. She did a good job of keeping the ball high. Both sure Hudson and Kellis with eight rebounds in this game, and now a foul on Hanksler. That will be her fourth. And it will be number six, I believe, on the Huskies. So that would be correct. The next foul for either team is a one and one opportunity. Each team with two starters who have four fouls. Of course, one starter out of the game for Andover, Katie Tyson with that early injury in the second half. Foul by Ashley Johnson, and that'll put Randy Hill at the line. That puts Cardinals in the bonus situation for the rest of this game, 2.56 remaining. Coach Taylor a little uh, confused on the call there, but. Hill hits the first and earns the second. Big free throws. This can make it a two possession game. It's short, Ewert in there gets the rebound. Three point lead. Hanksler in trouble, pressured by Townsend. Ewert up top. Johnson for three, it's good, and the game is tied again. Why she just turned and fired. Made that shot count. Johnson with a nice three-point play and a big opportunity for the Huskies to tie up this game. Lyons gets it in to Townsend, torn away by Hanksler. Townsend tried to play it off or out of bounds, but a turnover to the Huskies. And the Huskies are going to call a timeout. And I think they got away with one there. I thought Townsend was fouled in the corner. But it'll be Husky ball with a 49 all game. 2.07 remaining on the clock. Oh, Joe, you can't ask for a better ball game than this. It's been tight from, well, the Cardinals opened up a, a fairly sizable lead and, and uh, had that seven point bulge at the break. But to Andover's credit, did a great job of getting right back into this ball game. And, there's, there's where we sit at 2.07 remaining, tied at 49. The Huskies have not lead led. Now Jasmine Town trying to get it off Hanksler, but she couldn't do it, and that uh, leads to that turnover. Coach Chris Biggins talking some strategy. They need a big stop on defense. The momentum has swung both ways in the second half. Start of the half, a big momentum boost for the Huskies as they battle back to get a tie. Cardinals went back in front by as much as seven. And now a couple of big three-pointers have helped them tie it at 49. 
And the turnover gives them the opportunity to take their first lead of the night. And over Boyce defeating the Coon Rapids boys, 74-65. Ewert's pass picked off by Jasmine Townsend, but then she gives it right back and called for a foul, and she is gonna be done for the night. No, they're gonna call the foul on Randy Hill. That'll be her fourth. No, they're not gonna call it on Randy Hill, though. It, Cardinals are going to the line. Oh, they called it on Medcalf. They called it on Medcalf. Even worse, that's yeah. hers. Yeah, no, you could uh, definitely tell that was on Medcalf. Okay, oh, I missed. That's her fourth. There's another look at that as a great steal by Jasmine Townsend. She's gonna take it up court, and there's where Medcalf uh, gets the infraction. So it's number five on Medcalf. She is done for the night. Townsend will go to the line and shoot a one and one. Did it help if I opened my eyes? Amy Handorf coming into the ball game for the Huskies, her first opportunity here this evening. Tied at uh, 49, a one and one opportunity for Jasmine Townsend. First one won't go. Eward there for the rebound. And Andover on the move again. Handorf left side. Nice pass inside. Sather. No call on the turnover. Cardinals on the run. Lions. Shot won't go. Rebound. Still loose. Still loose. Finally tied up. The possession arrow favors the Huskies, and that was uh, I'm not quite sure what that was. That, that was a scrum. There's, there's another look at that. She, I think she fell. I don't think the crowd was calling for a foul, but I think she, she, I think she, she slipped and fell. And there's unfortunately a good look for Chelsea Lyons. Couldn't get it to fall. A lot of action underneath, and it looks like Randy Hill had a handle on it. And then well, four is people go. had hands, <laughs> hands on that ball. That just, that ball just would not, uh, did not want to settle down. 121 remaining. We're tied at 49, Joe. There you see it. She stepped on, clearly stepped on Townsend's foot. Or Chelsea Lyons' foot. Johnson looking for room in the lane. Blocked by Kellis. And Kellis will track down the loose ball. Her fifth block of the game. And we're under a minute remaining. Hill cross court to Townsend. Looking to get to the lane. She's fouled by Hanksler. That'll be number five on Kirsten Hanksler. And it'll send Jasmine Townsend to the line for another critical one and one. Well, Townsend's been a little inconsistent from a line. We'll take another look at that as, as Townsend's going to drive. The basket, and there's the foul on Hanksler, and that's going to be it for her. That will be number five. Leaves with 10 points and eight rebounds, a block and a steal. <laughs> Coach Taylor needs to uh, get another player in the ball game here. Discussing, uh, maybe discussing who they want to put in. Teddy Dormanen going to check back into the ball game to replace Hanksler. Townsend at the line. Missed the front end of a one and one just about 20 seconds ago. Big free throw, Joe. She needs to make them both. it again it's Sather tracking down the rebound Andorf into the front court and a timeout called by the Huskies 40.2 seconds left in a tie game and at this point do you do you hold for the last shot well, I, I think you do Joe I think it with 40 seconds left an opportunity to get out of this game, if you can get a good look, uh, hold it to the 
almost to the bitter end and see if you can get a force a shot or get a shot run on your offense. I think that's what uh, Coach Taylor may want to do in this situation, but free throw opportunities for Coon Rapids can't make them count. Well, a nail biter at Andover. If you've got any questions, concerns, comments about this or any other broadcast you hear on see here on CTN, give us a call 763-767-6526 the number to call or you can email us at sports at ctnstudios.com that's sports at ctnstudios.com that's some of the Cardinal freshman players We're in a ball game very similar to this very just before this one went right to the end So 40.2 seconds, Huskies with the ball. We'll see what, we will see what the strategy is here of Coach Taylor, missing three of his starters. They go to Handorf on the inbound, watched by Hill on the right wing. Picks up the ball, gets it to Sather. Ewert calling for it at the back door, and get it, and she'll score. 25 seconds, first lead of the night for Andover. That's a defensive breakdown for the Cardinals. Townsend fouled on the baseline, and she will go to the line for two. As you mentioned, you were calling for that basketball. She was all alone on the wing underneath the basket. An easy opportunity. And Townsend, a normally trustworthy free throw Shooter struggling a bit tonight at 50%, three for six. And she hits the first. Townsend can tie it again at 18.2. I just think if she would have been able to hit some earlier free throws, Joe. them both and we're tied again with 18 seconds. Another timeout. I'm not so sure that Coach Taylor wanted them to call a timeout in that situation. He looked at, I think they wanted to bring the ball up before they called the timeout. 18.2. The last thing he wanted was to uh, get trapped in the backcourt. Hi, I, I believe we might we might have a little video highlight from this game on the website, cgnstudios.com, now with video. Just keeps getting better every day. Best part about it is still Joe Young. Information on, on Joe Howie Young. Shapiro. I know, yeah, it's an old joke. Well, once again, a tie ball game. Huskies in control. Of the ball, 18.2 seconds. There's some big free throws by Jasmine Townsend. Hitting them both when she needed to. And that Ewert basket gave Andover its first lead of the game. Have not led, had not led until that point. Andorf up top, 10 seconds. Looking right side, got a pick from Sather. To Johnson, way out. Ewert will throw up a prayer off the side of the backboard, and we're going to overtime, Howie. Uh, you know, I knew at that point this is where it was going to be headed. Overtime tied at 51. And we will take a short break, as we mentioned, quite possibly going to be, and now we know it is a CTN instant classic. The overtime is coming up next.
To order this game or any other CTN presentation as a keepsake video, call 763-767-6525 or log on to ctnstudios.com. Gigi Hudson and Dina Ewert. Face off at center court, a jump ball, a four minute overtime session. Well, Joe, this situation you would think would favor Coon Rapids with three starters for Andover being out of the lineup. Ewert wins the tip, Handorf brings it into the Andover offense, picked off the pass by Lions. She'll take it on the run and score. A little drama on that basket, almost, almost uh, came out the front. Lions got a hand in and got it off of Sather's leg out of bounds. Well, that, that was huge defense by Lions well, to start that was, this half. That was the correct call. It went right off the uh, off of Sather. Lions across midcourt, setting the Coon Rapids offense. Kellis down in the corner. Townsend spinning, kicks it out to Lions. Lions steps in, short jumper for Kellis, won't go, Handorf the rebound. Pushed that a little too much. Lions almost got in again, and then Hudson thought she had the block instead. She's called for the foul, and that'll be number five on Gigi Hudson. Let's take a look at this again, because I, I I saw quickly, but I thought she had ball. Nope, she had nope, hand. She did a little hand. That's a good call. It'll put Dina Ewert at the free throw line. And that is going to be, as you mentioned, her fifth foul. Coach Biggins needs to make a change. And we will see Tara Mortensen coming back in. So the Cardinals going a little bit for smaller. the more offensive, yep. smaller lineup. Gigi Hudson getting a nice hand from the Cardinal faithful here. And she deserves it. She's played a nice game. 2.45 remaining in the overtime period. 53-51 in favor of the Cardinals. Huskies looking to see if they can tie it back up with Dina Ewart at the line. She hits the first. This is the second, Kellis with the rebound. Chelsea Lyons into the front court. And off to Hill. Hill driving the lane off the glass and in. Randy Hill's first free throw or field goal of the ball game. And it comes at a huge time. And that time the defense did nothing to stop her. She was able to gain, gain the lane and put it up and in. And over defense resting on that play. Dorman in trying to kick it back out. Johnson tried to get it out off of Hill and did. So the Huskies will keep the ball. And I think they missed a travel on Dorman as well. We're, we're going to see, watch, watch the, the travel. There, oh, there, I mean, it, it was so obvious and it wasn't called. They go to Handorf up top on the inbound left side. Johnson bobbles and recovers. Ewert turns to face the basket. Sather tipped away by Lyons, but Ewert able to keep control. Oh, nice job by Chelsea Lyons just to poke that away. Johnson to the lane. She is fouled, and she will go to the line to shoot two. I believe that'll be number four on Randy Hill. Take another look at that as Johnson trying to split the defense and force that shot up. And as you mentioned, that uh, now being the fourth foul on Randy Hill, and the Cardinals 
have to be concerned with Hill at four and Townsend at four. Still 141 remaining in this overtime period. Johnson can cut it to a one point lead. Misses the front end and Kellis the rebound. A big miss by Ashley Johnson. Uh, Cardinals will A, want to take some time off the clock and definitely put a bucket in. Three point attempt by Hill won't go. Kellis tied up with Sather for the rebound. The Cardinals will keep possession on the arrow. I think that was an ill advised three point shot for Randy Hill. Fortunately, for Coon Rapids, they get the tie-up and get the basketball back. Well, Kellis has been an animal on the boards all night. 11 now. Kellis off the inbound, scores another huge basket. That puts the lead to five now with a minute 18 remaining. We'll see if uh, Coach Taylor calls a timeout or lets his team continue. Eward. Left side, Sather for three, it's good. That's on your best scorer is left alone at the top of the key. That's a defensive lapse for Coon Rapids. Well, they haven't had many against her tonight. Nope, but you have to you have to keep an eye on their number one score. Sather there, was scoreless in the first half. Yeah, there's no defender out on her. She just frees up and drops it. 10 points in the game now. And 10 points in the second half, none bigger than that three right there. That, that was huge. Cuts it back to a two point lead and has the crowd doing the wave. Or at least a few anyway. Well, they're getting more help. I, I, I'm not, I've never been a very good big fan of the wave. I just, you know. They're getting, what do I know? Got some boys basketball. Cardinals hosting the Elks next Tuesday night. Our next chance to see the boys basketball team is that will premiere, of course, at midnight. But talk about a drama-filled ball game. Oh. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. 102 remaining, a two-point lead for the Cardinals. They have possession of the basketball, and their goal is A, take time off the clock, and again, put some points, additional points on the board. Across midcourt, under a minute. Driving, kicks it out, Mortensen. Puts it on the floor, Lions. And a foul away from the ball. On, Dor on Dorneman. And that'll put uh, Jasmine Townsend at the line to shoot the one and one. I believe that'll be to shoot the two. As they are now 10 fouls. It says eight on the, on the uh, score. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong side, sir. No, you're looking at the wrong side. No, I'm not. Eight, eight fouls for the visitor. Right. The Cardinals are not the visitor. Either way. No, you're wrong. See, now you're wrong. No, that means the home team, Andover, has 10 fouls. It should be. That's right. The double bonus. But for either way. Yes, when when they when they foul. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just slowing it down so you can comprehend. Thanks. She I only hit that. one. It's a three-point game. 36 seconds left. And over with the ball. Johnson in trouble. Gets it to Sather. Look into the baseline. Kicking it out. Three-pointer for Hansdorf. Won't go. Sather got the rebound is fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. 20 seconds remaining in this ball game, 58-55 in favor of the Cardinals. Look at, now, look at that. Now how does the official not see that? I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. That's a turnover is right he, there. Is he looking at the ceiling? 
I thought it was a little tight for her to well, get yeah, it you know. around that, <laughs> that uh, baseline and stay in bounds, and apparently it was a little bit. That's called a home, uh, home court no call. No call. Either way. Or a home court non-call. Either way, it's a three-point game, and Sather will go to the line to shoot two. Twenty seconds remaining. Big free throws for the Huskies. They hit the first one, Joe. Do they miss the second and try and get a shot from the outside? Or get an immediate putback. Or get an immediate putback. And tie the game again. We will have to wait and see. Of course, it all hinges on her making the first that one. Would, that would be correct. And uh, at this point, you might try and hit them both. And then a very quick foul. Well, she hits the first. And they're taking they're taking their rebounders out of the lane, so you've got to imagine she's gonna go for this shot. Unless she just pounds it off the backboard. And she doesn't, she hits it perfectly. One point game, and a quick foul by Sather will put Hill at the line at the other end. Well, and it didn't take a lot of time off the clock. 18.8 ticks remaining. And a couple another big free throws coming up for Coon Rapids. Randy Hill this time on the line. A couple opportunities here. You for sure want to hit one, but you definitely want to would like to hit the hit the both of them. Hit the both of them. Hit both of them. Eighteen point eight seconds. So. And he'll short on the first. This is a huge free throw to make it a two-point game. And she hits it. It's a two-point lead. Sather on the run to the lane. Puts it up. It's short. Ewer to foul. Won't go. Go. Kellis the rebound, and she is fouled. A uh, big miss for the Huskies. Now a couple of big free throws again coming back the other way. And the free throw, or the foul rather, I think going to go against Ewards. Uh, no, Sather. it's going to go against Johnson, they say. And say they're uh, walking back gingerly up the court. A little, uh, yeah. Hobbling a little bit. Okay, do you want to play? Now well, baking them both would make a two possession game. And Kellis hits the first. Second one, she gets the roll and it's a four point game. Long bomb off the glass will go. Lions the rebound, Sather the foul, but it's all over now. Johnson just fired that one for more than mid court and actually almost put it in. She did almost put that in. I was going to say, if uh, if that goes in, she should get four points for that <laughs> and tie the game. Changing up. the rules again, Joe. Well, that that shot would have deserved it. Chelsea Lions at the free throw line can. Well, the game pretty the game, much over yeah. at this point. Yeah, the game is pretty much iced, and the, and this is a, this is a huge win for Coon Rapids. Not only does it put their record at ten and five, but it also yeah. puts it at three and or four and three in the conference. That was number five on Sather. Finishes with twelve points, all in that second half. The only 
only he remaining. Was, yeah, yeah, the only one left on the floor, the only remaining starter. Lions missed them both. Ewart heaves, heaves it, but into the rafters. And that is how the game will end. A battle to the end in overtime, 61-57 win for Coon Rapids. We'll be back to wrap things up from Andover High School after this. second job. Well, no, I know, I know that, but we're trying really hard, and it's just a, mm, yes, I, we, no, I know, well, I understand it's a final notice. Hello there. Having a lasting effect on a kid's life can be quick and easy. Here's some stuff we've learned. From time to time, secret codes may be used. It's not uncommon for a kid to demonstrate special powers. Costumes can be uncomfortable, but loads of fun. Moments like these happen every day. Lend your support. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. That's all for now. The CTN Sports Post Game Show is brought to you by SportsPrepZone.com. Complete coverage of high school sports in the North Metro and another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN. Back at Andover High School, the Coon Rabbits Cardinals with a big 61-57 overtime win over the Huskies. Joining me on the sidelines, head coach Chris Biggins and Chelsea Lyons. And Chelsea, uh, you had a big lead in the first half. What were your thoughts as, as you guys got off to such a great start? We were surprised. Last year, that's how they uh, turned the tables on us. We were the ones down at halftime. We knew they were a second-half team, so we knew we had to come out and play even harder than we had in first to keep the lead going in the second. Now they, they trim the lead, they get it tied up, you guys get back out in front, but they come back and take their first lead of the ball game in, in the final minute. What are your thoughts during that final minute stretch? I was, you know, telling Chris I need some alka so that was, I was out there, I was trying to lead the team, but I mean, everybody gets frustrated and we were getting frustrated. The rest were letting, letting us play, so that was what worked for us and against us. And uh, I don't know, it was just, we had to keep it up and we tried. Now, first possession of the overtime, you come up with a big steal, go in with a left-handed layup. Did that kind of calm your nerves and the team's nerves a little bit uh, through that overtime? The steal did, but as you saw, the ball kind of rolled around a couple times, and it told everybody that we got to finish completely because nothing is a certain, you know, even a steal and a left-handed layup, which is, should be a certain thing every time, isn't certain. So you got to try, and you got to go 110% with everything. Now, what does this win do for you guys? gives us a lot of um, momentum going into the next stretch of our season. And we have Anoka next at home, and they're, they're not doing so well in the conference, but every team is a tough opponent. And I know they're gunning for us because we beat them last year. And, you know, we just got to take them like any other team, and we got to play them hard. All right, congratulations Thank on you. a great game. On the other side, head coach Chris Biggins. And uh, how's your stomach doing after that oh, one? Pretty good. I told my assistants I felt like I played in that game. I was uh, so worn out after all the emotion that went through in overtime. Now talk about a little bit the change in the attitude on the bench and the feelings that you had toward the game from the first half when you're on to a 13-point lead to when they tie it up and even take the lead late in the game in the second half. Yeah, it was uh, at a point in the first half, I think there was something like three minutes left in the first half. They'd only made one field goal from the outside, and, and most of their points had come from the line. And I knew that wasn't going to last throughout the whole game. Andover's just too good of a team to be continue to shoot that poorly. And they came back in the second half and started picking up the intensity and, and making the shots that I thought they would probably be making in the first half. And were you able to breathe at all during that final four <laughs> minutes of overtime? Well, the fortunate thing for us, as I told the girls on the bench, is they had two starters out that had fouled out, uh, one of their best outside shooters and and, Met and Metcalf, their, po their point guard. So that, I, th I told our team, would give us an advantage because we had most of our starters still in the game and they had two of them that fouled out. 
Now, what does this win do for you? It evens you in the conference uh, standings with Andover, and and how does this look for the the rest of the push? Well, we have uh, we're in third place, I believe, right now, tied with Andover, uh, and. Next, as Chelsea said, we play Anoka, and then we finish out, finish out the first round on Tuesday against Elk River, and then we play everybody one more time. So uh, if we can finish out with two more victories, we'll, we'll still be uh, knocking on the door at the conference uh, championship. All right, well, congratulations on the big win tonight. Don't go anywhere. I will be back with Howie Shapiro to wrap things up from Andover High School right after this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sportsman Champlin Park Rebels on Thursday. Nice long putt. Watch this one. Boop. In the hole. Back to back to back. Extra base hits. And thank everybody out there for joining us. Continue to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Mr. Ali Shapiro, I'm Joe Young. Elka Seltzer's all around Ali yeah. Shapiro is that that game really did have just about everything. A lot of drama went right to the end. Go to overtime and the Cardinals squeak away with the victory. What I think this really does, Joe, for the Cardinals is it gives them some confidence continuing on in this season because they had the big lead at, at half. Andover came back in Andover's gym and, and tied the game up. Had that uh, one point lead early with, uh, with about a minute left. But to get the victory, to go into overtime and then to close it out was very important. And it was, it was huge. You know, we knew coming in Andover was one game ahead of the Cardinals in those conference standings. The Cardinals came in. They needed to win. They got a great start and then just persevered down the stretch. And, and they really did. And they had, you know, a number of players stepped up. Of course, Chelsea had a very big night. But, you know, when Jasmine got in foul trouble, some other players came and, and, and picked it up for them. And How about Alyssa Kellis with 12, blo uh, 12 rebounds, 5 blocks? Huge. I mean, huge. And Gigi Hudson also playing big. And Severson pl contributing as well. So, you know, you get a number of players at the depth on the bench. You get some uh, players playing well, getting the rebounds playing so well on defense it adds up to a victory. Yeah, well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the second half and the overtime of this showdown between the Huskies and the Cardinals. At least I think we have some highlights for you. We might. We usually have highlights right Come now. On. There, there they go. are. There we go. Cardinals getting some points from Chelsea Lions in that second half that uh, three of her four three-pointers in the ball game from the second half. She finished with four of six from beyond the arc, but the Huskies just kept chipping away and chipping away at the lead. The Cardinals doing all they can to stay in front, but the Huskies able to tie it up about midway through and then tied it up again late in the game. Sather, who was a non-factor in the game in the first half, didn't score a point, had 12 in the second half. Lions, another big three-pointer, as I mentioned, three of them in that second half. And Ashley Johnson came off the bench with a couple big three-pointers of her own for Andover and helped the Huskies force it to overtime. Randy Hill, a big drive to the hole in the uh, extra period to give the Cardinals a four-point lead. The last-ditch effort won't go. Alyssa Kellis securing the rebound. And the play of the game comes from the very beginning of the overtime. First possession, Chelsea Lions anticipating the pass, getting the steal, and giving, putting the left-handed layup. And there you see the roll nearly coming out, as she mentioned. It did. Uh, it rolled around a couple of times before dropping, and that is the play of the game delivered by the Coon Rapids Herald. And just a lot of big plays in this in this contest. It was hard to come up with just that one, Howie. Well, it really was, and you know, and, and there was. We take a look at the game stats. You can see some of the things that uh, both teams wanted to do. Look at the sh outside shots for both teams: 13 of 45 for the Cardinals, 12 of 48 for the Huskies. And there you see 3.5 of 17. Six of 14, but look at the difference in rebounds. 46 for Andover and 34 for the Cardinals, and you would think maybe the score would be a little different with that statistic, but the steals big on the Cardinals' favor at, at 10 to 3, and the blocks 12 to 2, and that's really the tail of the tape, Joe. Yeah, the defense just came up big for the Cardinals when they needed it, and they persevere 
in a tight game that went to overtime. Yeah, and really, and you, we talked about one of the things in the beginning is foul trouble, and both teams got in foul trouble, but now with the unfortunate injury to one of the starters for the Huskies and then two of their starters fouling out, the Cardinals did what they had to do. Three. And three, uh, yeah, well, at the very end, but by that, by that time the game was pretty much over, yeah. but but they did what they had to do to control this and get the win. Yeah, a big, a big, big victory, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Here's a look at what we have coming up here for you here on CTN. Boys swimming against the Anoka. Tornadoes on Thursday. That will be at Fred Moore Junior High. Then on Tuesday of next week, boys basketball, Cardinals hosting the Elk River Elks. And on Saturday the 28th, the rematch, the Cardinals hosting the Champlin Park Rebels. Again, the final score from Andover High School in overtime. It's the Coon Rapids Cardinals 61, the Andover Huskies 57. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including the incomparable Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young, saying goodnight. The CTN Sports Post Game Show is brought to you by SportsPrepZone.com. Complete coverage of high school sports in the North Metro and another proud sponsor of high school athletics on CTN.